us in song today. It's part of our series. We are in week three and uh, of our Genesis Salvation Begins series. And uh, today we're looking at the meaning, the meaning of the rainbow. Let's read. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 7, uh, the last part of chapter 7, verses 24, then into 8, verse 1, and then we're going to jump to chapter 9, verses um, 8 through to 17. So uh, let's read that together. Starting at uh, chapter 7, verse 24, the waters flooded the earth for 150 days, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Then God said to Noah and his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on the earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all the life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And the rain and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, we want to thank you for the story of Noah's ark. What a, what a great story what a great narrative this is and i pray lord as we look at it today and 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 particularly on today as we focus on M mother's day <coughs> excuse me help us to see what this means for us today and help us to apply this to our lives for we pray this in jesus name amen well the story of noah and the ark and the rainbow, that the narrative of this story is so popular, isn't it? In all of society, it's, it's one of the most popular stories that many people who don't read the Bible will probably know, the story of Noah's Ark and the flood. And um, it's, it's up there with Jonah. It's, it's like a, an, amazing, an amazing narrative and story. It's so great to teach kids, and, and it's just amazing... Um, uh, it can be illustrated so wonderfully because there's animals and there's an ark and it's, it's incredible and there's a rainbow. And, uh, and so it's an amazing story. We see that in this story that God is going to send a flood and, and Noah and his family um, are going to move into the ark with all the animals. And we know in the story that, in the narrative, that God sends rain for 40 days, the floods keep going. And, and, and Noah's in the ark there with his family and the animals are in the ark. Two of every kind are in the ark there, male and female. And God sends the water for 40 days and it keeps raining. And then after 40 days, the rain stops and the earth is completely covered in water. And, God, and, and Noah sends out a dove and the dove flies around and, and eventually it comes back. With, with some foliage, indicating that the, the waters are subsiding. And so God subsides the waters. And eventually Noah, 
Noah comes out of the ark with all the animals and then a rainbow appears. And it's just an incredible story. It's, it's so wonderful to, to hear that and, and to hear that this family, they were safe inside the ark and all the animals were protected and they came out and it was a happy ending. And there's the, there's the rainbow, which is a colourful um, indication in the sky there. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing story. A great narrative. But what does it mean? What does it mean? And how does that tie into Mother's Day? I want to suggest today that the, the, narrative, the narrative of, of Noah's Ark is actually wrapped up in the meaning of the rainbow. The meaning of the rainbow. And of course, in society and in culture, particularly in our, in our day and age in 2023, the meaning of the rainbow has a different meaning. It's not the same meaning as, as what is in Genesis and the story of, of, of Noah, Noah's Ark. And so what does the rainbow mean and how does that connect with Mother's Day? The word for the Hebrew word that's used in Genesis for rainbow is actually warbo. Warbo, W A R B O W, warbo, bow and arrow. That's the actual train, that's the actual literal word in the Hebrew. The English translation is rainbow. So when when we say when we say rainbow in the sky, what the Hebrew is actually saying is War bow. God actually says in chapter 9, verse 13, I will set my war bow in the clouds and it will be a sign of my covenant to all of creation. Why is God putting his war bow or his, his bow and arrow into the sky as a symbol? Why is he doing that? We know at the beginning of our series, when we looked at Genesis chapter 3, that, that ever since Genesis chapter 3, people and God have been essentially at war with God. We've, we've been disconnected from God because of the actions of Adam and Eve in the garden. We went that in, 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 in Genesis chapter 3, where they were tempted and they, they disobeyed God and they received the consequences of their disobedience towards God, God that sent into the world in the Garden of Eden through the disobedience of, of Adam and Eve and, and that all the creation was affected by that because Adam and Eve and, and all people wanted to become gods themselves and because of that, they have been disconnected from God and they were removed from the garden because of their sin and their disconnection. We saw in Genesis chapter 3, not just disconnected from God, which is like a vertical disconnection, but a horizontal disconnection between each other. There was, there was issues within the relationships with people. And we saw this last week with Cain and Abel, when Phil brought us Cain and Abel, how that was ultimately seen when Cain killed his brother Abel. So there is this disconnection, there is this war between each other, but war between God. And this is not... This has not changed. And God knows that after the flood, people will continue to sin. People will continue to be at war with him and will disobey him. And we actually see this in Noah's family after the flood. If you read the narrative, we see that Noah continues to sin and his, his family continues to sin. And then we see the generations continuing to sin. The rainbow is significant because... God has placed his war bow upwards. When you see a rainbow, it's actually, the scientists tell us that when the light goes through the, through the water after a storm or after rain, then it's actually, a, it's actually a, a ring. But from where we stand on earth, when you look up, it looks like a bow. And when God places his war bow, it looks like a bow, but it's pointing upwards away from earth. And Noah has been given a second chance. 
Noah and his family and all of creation has been given a second chance because God has pointed his arrows away from humanity and given us a second chance. This is at the heart of God's covenant that never again, he says in verse 11, will I destroy creation by a flood. And though, even though Noah and his family and all the generations to come and all of humanity will continue to disobey God, he will not destroy them. And so God makes a covenant with creation. So what does the rainbow actually mean for us today? I want to suggest that the meaning of the rainbow is all about chapter 8, verse 1. It's about God remembers humanity. I think when you look at the whole narrative of Noah's Ark, everything that happens in that narrative, the building of the ark, the flood, the animals, the, the two of every kind, male and for going in there, the dove flying around, the waters going up, the waters subsiding, coming out of the ark, the rainbow, everything focuses on chapter 8, verse 1. But God remembered Noah. But God remembered Noah. God remembers humanity. He does not forget us. In the midst of the flood, and, and notice in, in 8, verse 1, in chapter 8, verse 1, what's happening there is that they are in the ark. The, the, the waters have covered the earth. They're in the midst of the flood. God remembers Noah and his family, and all of creation while they're in the ark. He hasn't forgotten them. He remembers them. Oh, I can remember many years ago, um, our son was two and a half years old, and, and Kylie was taking, I think we, we think it might have been swimming lessons or something like that. Anyway, Kylie had, uh, had Jack and our daughter, who was about nine months old at the time, and and. Kylie's off, uh, probably swimming lessons or something like that, and 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 I, I was at home, and I I, I had to get petrol, for something, and so I drive to the petrol station. So we lived in Heathridge at the time, and I, there was a petrol station on the corner of Ocean Reef Road and Marmion Avenue. It was a BP service station, and I, I go and get petrol, and I'm standing at the Bowser. Daydreaming, as you do at Bowser's, while it's filling up. And then I suddenly remembered that my nine-month-old daughter was at home, in the cot, in her room, by herself. And I'm standing at the Bowser, and I just thought, I've forgotten about Ruby. And so I just put the Bowser back, I hopped in my car, and I drove off. And I just sped home and I thought, I hope there's no police on the way home. hope the previous commissioner's not listening to this. But I raced home as fast as I could. I was in panic mode because I had forgotten that my daughter was at home in the cot, asleep. And I raced home. It took me about, well, the trip was probably about a seven-minute trip. I probably did it in two minutes. I flew home. And I was panicking and I'm thinking, what am I going to find when I get there? I go, yeah, is, is she going to be screaming? Is she going to be there? Like, so I'm racing home. I walk in. I open up the door. And there she is, sound asleep. As if nothing had ever happened. And I just, I was so relieved. How could I not remember <laughs> that she was there? The frailty of our humanity, the frailty of our imperfection, and yet God remembers us. God remembers us. God remembers us in our brokenness, in our frailty. And I think that today, Mother's Day, we remember our mums, right? We focus on that today. 
But what this story, what this narrative really is saying, and what a great story it is, what it's saying is that God remembers you. Not just today, but every single day of your life. For all eternity. What does he say to Noah? I will establish my covenant forever. God remembers you for all eternity. That's what Noah and the ark and the rainbow is all about. And so today, Mother's Day 2023, we, we, we focus on remembering our mums. We focus on honouring our mums. But Noah's ark focuses on God remembers you and he remembers you every single day of your life. So what does this mean for us today? I want to suggest five things that this is saying to us today and and as you head off today and as you celebrate Mother's Day and in how you're going to celebrate that. These are the five things I think we take away from Noah's Ark today. Firstly, The only thing not overwhelmed by the flood is God's commitment to his creation. There were the waters covering the earth, completely wiped out. But God's commitment to you today is forever, has not been overwhelmed. That's the first thing. The second thing, when we are overwhelmed by the flood of life, God remembers us. And how often are we overwhelmed by the life's floods where we just get caught up in our dysfunction and our rebellion? But even through that, God remembers us. Noah was in the ark with his family, with the animals. God remembers him in the midst of the flood. God remembers us in the midst of our flood. Number three, God remembers you personally. The story of Noah's Ark and the rainbow, it's personal. It's personal. This is about you. This is about your relationship with God, which was broken in Genesis Genesis chapter 3. This is personal. Today on Mother's Day, it's personal. Okay, We remember our mothers. We honour our mothers. This is personal. God remembers you forever. You personally, not collectively, but you personally. Number four, despite your rebellion against God, he still loves you. Look what he did for Noah and his family. Noah gets, comes out of the ark and he messes up. Read the narrative and you think, my goodness, isn't this our life Isn't the story of Noah's Ark our life? But despite our rebellion against God and our continual rebellion, his grace is so great, he still loves us. This is unconditional love for us today. Incredible stuff. And lastly, today on Mother's Day, what are we taking away from Noah's Ark? God's love for us is ultimately seen in Jesus' saving work on the cross. The covenant between God and Noah and the rest of humanity back in, back in verse 11 of chapter 9 was that he would not destroy the world again through flood, through water. But ultimately, we see his everlasting covenant in Jesus' saving work on the cross, his death and his resurrection on the cross. And that is what we are going to celebrate now as we come Before the Lord's table, let us pray as we prepare ourselves. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you came, you died, and you rose again. Lord, Mother's Day is such a great day for us to remember our mums, to honour our mums. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to do that. And as we prayed earlier today, we thank you for our mums. But Lord, as we've seen in the story of Noah's Ark, an incredible narrative, incredible story, 
that the meaning of the rainbow is that you remembered us in the midst of the flood. And this is ultimately seen at the cross when you came and you died for us. You established the new covenant for all eternity where we can come before you, we can come before the foot of the cross, ask for forgiveness, submit our lives to you. You love us unconditionally. Amen. We're going to now celebrate the new covenant. As we do that, we take the, the elements which are symbolic of what Jesus has done for us, symbolic of the new covenant. When we take the bread, we say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. What unconditional love that is. Jesus, you remembered me. This is personal. And I thank you for that. When we take the cup, we say, Jesus, this, this cup represents, represents the new covenant of your blood that was shed for my sin. You remembered me. And I thank you. We're going to spend a moment in quiet reflection. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day and we, we, we remember our mums, I want you to take a moment now to remember what Jesus has done for you, that he remembered you in the midst of your flood. And I want you to come before the Lord, just 30 seconds to a minute, and come before him and, and ask, for, ask for forgiveness. Confess your sin quietly in your own heart, your rebellion against God in your own heart. Confess that. Thank him for his saving work on the cross for what these elements represent. And then in a moment's time, I will ask you to come forward and to collect the elements and we'll, we'll take those together. 30, 30 seconds to a minute. The Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. As Gordo and the team plays... Uh, some quiet music there, I would ask that you might hop up out of your seats. If you can come down the centre aisle and collect uh, uh, some bread and, and, and the cup, head back to your seat on the, on the outside aisles would be great. Uh, take the bread, reflect on the new covenant, reflect that Jesus remembered you on the cross. His body was given for you. And then if you could hold the cup, we'll drink together proclaiming the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. This table is for believers. If you love the Lord,